Okay. We're going to look at the latest iteration, today's iteration actually, of the voxel ray tracer. And uh, what we're going to see it looks very simple. And in fact, this mirror sphere and these checkerboards could be done much faster and in a much higher resolution by using a procedural approach or more traditional ray tracer. But this mirror sphere you see here is not a procedurally defined object. I mean, it was drawn initially, it was voxel rasterized according to a procedural rep functional representation, FREP object. But uh, what's being directly ray traced here is in fact a structure of tiny cubes, each of which makes up the mirror. And I'll prove that just by individually knocking out, destroying a few of these cubes, and then sidling up. And so we'll see inside the mirror sphere, which for complicated reasons isn't black, as it should be if it's, but in fact exposes some complicated reflection of their surroundings. But you see the edges of this are pentomino shaped hole into the interior of the mirror sphere. And if we actually go inside, the frame rate will get very low indeed. But let's turn around and go back out. That's the exterior here. Let's go look at these checkerboards. Which are not in fact checkerboards, but made up of cubes. And since I have a handy destructor array on the D key, I can change the geometry of this space we're visualizing. Well, not the geometry, but I can change what's in it. Well, not the geometry of the space, but we're changing geometry by removing it. And you see lots of artifacts. This screen resolution, the whole full screen is uh, 320 by 240. So the window is somewhat smaller than that, and we're shooting one ray for every four pixels. So it's uh, you know somewhere around one sixty or less than one sixty by one twenty resolution of rays, and you see that it's already fairly good because the colors are correct and such. But we can now let's go back to the mirror sphere and we'll see this. Yeah. All this geometry we've created is now reflected. And here we have purple mist, which is just the mist of the empty space cube. And we look back, we see the reflection of the purple mist. And so what frame rate have we been getting here? Well, let's go over to the log and look. And every 10 frames it prints out how many thousands of a second that one frame in 10 took. And so we see that uh, we're getting something like 7 frames a second there. Now, 
these artifacts, the jagged edges and whatnot, were we shooting ten times as many rays, they would be much less visible, I promise you. The important thing is getting the colors correct, getting the amount of detail correct. Now let's stop and let's look at it. See I have a I have a filter that's not from the operating system. I wrote that filter that uh evens out the edges. And uh, we'll look at the code some other time, but I just wanted to see how that uh, I wanted to see how that recorded. Thank you for joining us today for Adventures in Ray Tracing.